Lamonis, and I'm going to bring in Seth Kaplan, managing partner of Airline Weekly, because I understand, Seth, you've said, look, airlines get threats all the time, so are you suggesting that we only really hear about a small percentage of them? Uh, that's true, Mandy. I happen to be today, by the way, at, at an airline conference here in Miami, and speaking with executives at some of the airlines, they've said, you know, they haven't necessarily noticed an increase in the aggregate number of threats. I mean, and that runs from anything from something that's clearly not credible to something where, yeah, they work with the TSA to determine the level of that threat. So that sort of suggests that, you know, one of a couple of things, you know, are there more credible th threats or are we just hearing about them more? Probably a combination of the two. Often when you have one of something you have you know number one some copycat incidents and number two we all just start paying attention more in the same way that last year it right. seemed like everybody suddenly was, was concerned about people reclining their seats into the person you know it, yeah. you hear about it more after a while. I mean the, the number of threats is one thing right Seth but the ability to thwart any real or credible threats is completely another especially in light of the TSA news we just heard today. Well right? I want people to be paying attention all of the time not just once in a while or when we hear about mm -hmm. a threat and that's a concern for me in reading the TSA report, all these, these tests that were done, they were just missing one after another mm -hmm. after another. I don't know if it's a training issue or an awareness issue or people just lax, but I'm concerned. Yeah, and, You're concerned? Yeah. Very. Yeah, and, and, and Marcus, you know, a, a key point that Eamon made a moment ago, uh, Jay Johnson, in, in, in announcing this yesterday, was, was quoted saying uh, that we... You know, out of context, the numbers can look a little bit deceiving. And basically what that's to say is not to you know, sort of make any excuse for that because the numbers are awful. But remember, they were probing known vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities that, you know, people on the outside try, you know, with, with worse intentions would not know about. So it's not that... 95% of, well, let's just say it's terrorists would get these things through. They're going after the very most vulnerable spots. Still, of course, completely it's unacceptable. Not a great excuse. That's why we've seen But what the we've fact seen. that they know they're vulnerable means they should be addressing it long before Absolutely. testing it. So that, that concerns me. Guys, Eamon, part of the problem the here. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, go ahead, Eamon. Well, I was just going to say, Mandy, part of the problem here for the TSA is that they're playing ultimately defense and they're on their back heel all the time here. I mean, the terrorists only have to be right once. The TSA has to be right millions of times a day. And the American aviation industry is just so vast. Our economy, tourism, everything depends on the ability of people and goods to move around this country fairly freely. How do you set up a system that can protect all that in real time at every single airport in the country? It is a massive, massive challenge. The question is, with all these solutions that are out there, whether you privatize it, whether you have more training and other things, is it really ultimately a doable task? What do you think? What do you think there, Seth? Is it a doable task, and what would you recommend? Yeah, well, uh, you know, the bottom line is, you know, knock on wood, it, it's, it's been now 14 years since 9/11. So, you know, so something has gone right. I mean, the reason nothing has happened on that scale since then is not because nobody's tried. It, the question of privatization versus federal, I don't know that that necessarily determines airline security. You know, people will talk about, oh, you know, Israel has some of the best security in the world. They rely there a lot on private contractors Seth, supervised very Seth, closely I don't, by experts. I don't want to cut, Seth. I don't want to cut you off, but yeah. here's what I want to tell you: we wait in lines at airports a long time. We're all frustrated by the process. We're waiting there because we have this assurance that it's right. If I'm going to wait, I want it to be right. If it's not going to be right, then let me just go through as quick as I can. And so I think we want to make sure that we make it loud and clear. Nobody has a problem waiting. We just want it to be right. And I think mm -hmm. excuses about it not being right just aren't acceptable to me. I have employees flying. Our family members are flying. It's not acceptable when you have lives, right, hanging in the balance. Right. It's, it's no small thing. It's not acceptable. Okay. You know, the great. Other, the other... We have to leave it there, guys, but sure. a really great discussion. Thank you very much, Seth and Eamon. Over to you, Ty. All right,